Hi everyone! <laughs> so in today's video we are going to be making wild lavender sage soap using Candle Science's rosemary sage and their white sage and lavender. I'll put that blend that I'm using in the description box below. But both of these fragrances soap really well. Um, I've used them individually, but this is the first time that I've actually blended them together. Um, so the plan today, I'm using one of my own formulations as well. So right now, what I've done for our colors is I've taken Brambleberries Aqua Pearl Mica as well as their Evergreen Mica. And I've done a teaspoon and a half of each of those and blended them together in here just to get kind of a nice uh, foresty green color uh, for to represent our sage. And then for our lavender, uh, I've taken bramble berries. I love this mica. This is their lavender mica as well as their orchid mica, another one of my favorites. Blended those together. Um, let's see what I've got here. I've got two teaspoons of the lavender and one teaspoon of the orchid mica in here. And just again, use the mini mixer that you can pick up on Amazon. I'll have my favorite linked below. Um, this guy, the one that I just showed is from Candles and Supplies, but this one from Amazon is super, super good, and I just love it. I'm gonna be trying a new technique today as well. I'm gonna try to do a mica drizzle on top of this. So my plan is, um, what I usually do actually, is I take one of the, the measuring uh, cup things, uh, Pyrexes, that I um, measure out my oils in, and I'm going to just put my mica in there, and that's what I usually do after I've mixed it up nice, but I'm gonna just leave a little bit out um, so that I'm able to come back through with like a dropper, a pipette, and try a drizzle technique on the top of these soaps. So I'm really excited. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. Um, <laughs> but this next one, I'm gonna put the green into. So I'm just gonna put it right into here. Oh, I don't even think you're able to see. I'm still getting the hang of how to record these videos. for my soaps, but I'm just gonna be putting that right into here. Got a spatula um, to scrape out all those last bits. And then when I break off my batter, it just works better for me that way um, to be able to just have an individual spatula and an individual little bowl for each one. Um, right now my oils are at 95 degrees, which um, is pretty good, really. Um, my lye water solution is at 75. I would like those to be a little bit closer together, but um, we might just go with it today um, and see what happens. As far as additives go, so today I'm doing a pretty simple formula. I did go ahead and use 6% fragrance. Um, I'm gonna be topping this one with some lavender buds and some white sage. I'm excited about that, um, but I'm not using any other additives. Oh, sodium lactate. I've got sodium lactate, 43 grams of that for my formula. Um, usage rate on that one is gonna be just about one uh, teaspoon per pound of oils. So got about close to five pounds of oils for this formula. Um, and then, and then for our main batch, I will be using my titanium dioxide, which I get from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And I just put it in this little shaker bottle here um, that I actually repurposed from a fragrance that I got from Aztec Candle and Soap Supply. They have these nice little spouts, um, if you're able to see that. But basically what I did was I just put in here two parts water, one part titanium dioxide, and I get the water soluble. Um, I do find that that one works better for me than the oil soluble. And I just put 1% of a preservative. I tend to use Optifin um, for my preservative just because of the water in here. I like to keep this on hand for a while. Um, but this is how I avoid clumps with my titanium dioxide. I've had issues for so long with getting clumps. And this shaker right here, um, I learned about from Ellen Ruth, and this has just been such a godsend. It's the only thing that's worked for me um, to get my titanium dioxide not clumpy. And you can just put a few little marbles in the bottle, those little steel balls, um, and that way you're kind of pulverizing your titanium dioxide. And then I will just add that to my main pot just to get it a little bit lighter in color. I do use a lot of um, unrefined butters in these. The shea butter is kind of that off gray color. Um, so that'll help us out there. 
All right, so I just gradually got my lye water solution increased in temperature. So it is now at about 79, 78.6. And my oils are at 91. So that is pretty darn close to 10 degrees. I know some people don't even follow that rule, but I, I do tend to try um, to follow that. Okay, so I'm gonna um, be adding in my lye water solution and then I will be um, pouring it off into these two containers and then I will add some titanium dioxide to the main pot. And after that, we will um, stir in, um, actually before I pour it off, I'm gonna stir in my fragrance. Just because it is very well behaved, um, I will stir in before breaking this off into the two pots. And usually with these larger batches, I will um, use a spatula just to kind of help um, to mix this. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. So we are at an emulsion and I can always tell that because I don't see the batter separating, like the oil and the batter kind of separating. And just do a few more pulses here. I always tend to over mix, but try to get better with that. And then I'm gonna just hand stir in our fragrance. Mmm, smells so good. And I do tend to hand stir in fragrances just because I find that it makes for more relaxed soap making. I hand stir them usually at emulsion. And just so you all can see, I could break this off now, but it's just so well behaved. This formula though, when I did soap with the beeswax version, which I will put that version in the description as well below, it did really tend to accelerate things because I had to soap at such a high temperature. And I did still use the rosemary sage fragrance, which is you know mainly what I'm using today, along with the white sage and lavender, two very well-behaved fragrances. But because of that higher soaping temperature and that even 0.5% of beeswax, it just um, moved things along very quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna be breaking this off to our two pitchers here. We've got our purple. And then I'm gonna do our green. Should have closed this. Ooh. Got a little bit. Whenever I see a little bit of that lye um, solution, make sure to get that up real fast. I love these containers too from the Dollar Tree um, for lye water solutions. I learned about them from Katie Carson and they are just incredible. These guys for $1. Okay, and then I'm gonna pour off my green. And just stir these in. I'd probably do better if I used a whisk, but 
honestly, it works just fine with a spatula. I um, pre-dissolve all my micas now um, in a lightweight oil. I use olive oil usually or sweet almond oil if I have it in my recipe. And I do take that from the batch. Um, I don't add extra oils beyond my super fat, um, my 5% there, but mmm. Okay, and then in our main pitcher, I'm gonna give my titanium dioxide a little nice shake here and just squirt some of that right in. And that water is above and beyond um, the water in my recipe. So it is a little bit extra water, but not enough to cause glycerin rivers because of the fact that I have um, a pretty a pretty fair water discount. I wouldn't, I don't know if you would consider it steep. I've worked at um, 1.5 to one, which is um, usually like a 40% concentration of uh, lye. But uh, I find that that moves things a little too quick for me when I'm trying to do swirls. And today I wanna do a hanger swirl, which is usually, it's like my new favorite technique. Oh, do you all see how well behaved this batter is? It smells absolutely divine too. And you can see here this Winston and Walter mold. Um, this one I've had for going on three years and it's kind of, the silicone's a little floppy, but that's okay. I just try to avoid it when I'm pouring. Once you kind of get past that initial bottom layer, it does help. I think I did a little too much white in there. Oh well. Um, gonna do some purple. Just doing, I think you call this a drop swirl where you go down and back like so. And then what I usually like to do is do like an initial kind of swirl. So I'll do a little more here. Maybe. And this picture that I'm using now, I did get on Amazon. I will try to link it below for you all. It's really handy because you have kind of more of a spout on there. But I'm gonna take my hanger swirl tool, which I also got on Amazon, and just do a nice liberal swirl in there. Okay. This is always the part where it gets starts to get messy. I'm gonna get my paper towel. Okay, I think I'm gonna do some more white. Ooh. And we'll do some green. I think I wanna save most of the purple for the top. I didn't really think about that. Yeah, we're gonna do a purple. Yeah, I think I wanna save most of the purple. So let's finish up the white. Hmm. What should I do? Yeah, I think I'm gonna finish up the white here. I've got the oven preheating as well, cause I'm gonna just do, I've got it on keep warm. 
just to the lowest setting because I'm gonna do the cold process oven process method where I force it through gel phase, which I have just been trying the last couple of batches and it has been working really well for me because I don't tend to, I don't really think I get gel phase. It's kind of hard for me to tell because sometimes it looks glossy and other times it kind of doesn't. Actually, I'm gonna do some more. A little more purple, maybe. And my mica actually spilled. So you all, I've got about half of it left. Um, it spilled. I don't think it was in the camera frame, but that is what we are gonna be figuring out next. There's always something when you're making soap that keeps you on your toes, and that's why I love it so much. But I am kind of sad about that. I could definitely add some more like olive oil to it, um, but we're going to have to see here. I'm going to tap these. Okay. And I'm going to just add in the rest of the white. Okay, so drizzle in, it's gonna be more of a glop. The last of the purple. And these measuring cups definitely are harder to control. I would definitely recommend the pitchers, the longer spout ones more. And I'm gonna be cutting this bars with Obsidian, my new multi-bar cutter from Croatia, from the same guy. I'll have his Etsy shop linked below for you all. Um, I absolutely love it. That cutter allows me to do things that I um, previously was not able to do to make thicker, chunkier bars, which is so useful. So I'm gonna take these guys first and give them the drop on the floor so that we get out any air pockets. Okay, and then I'm gonna do my final round of hanger swirls here. Just kind of getting that top half swirling both ways and going all through it a little bit too. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to do this. Might have overmixed it. Who knows? So as I said, this is my first time doing this mica drizzle and uh, just, I mixed it with some olive oil. I think next time I would use a lighter weight oil, but this is what I went with and uh, I'm using a little pipette to drizzle it on the top. You can see how it's not quite as fluid as at least I might like. Possibly using like sweet almond oil might be better, but this recipe didn't have sweet almond oil in it. So, and I was taking the oil from the batch. So this is what I kind of had to work with, but it did end up pretty good.
So the technique that I'm attempting here is just using a chopstick, pulling down and then back up. And it creates kind of this, it almost reminds me of a pattern that you might see on a nice shirt or something. But the problem with mine here was that my mica was a little bit too thick because of the oil I was using. So I just decided to go back and just kind of swirl it up a little bit more and try to disperse some of that mica a bit more than it was, which I think the end result is pretty good. This part here is a voiceover. Um, the rest of the audio was filmed during the video, but I lost my audio for some reason during this part where I was doing the mica swirl. Um, but yeah, just using a chopstick and so yeah, the main challenge was just getting the globs. Well, they weren't really globs because like the oil pretty much will absorb into the soap, uh, that little extra bit of super fat. Well, I'm not super fatting beyond the recipe, but it uh, obviously the soap is already emulsified and that little bit of extra oil on the top will just kind of absorb into it um, and maybe behave a little bit like a super fat, but it technically isn't one, if that made any sense at all. But uh, I think what I would change in retrospect with this soap is actually what you're about to see me do next once I finish this. Um, so the colors that I chose, I really liked. I think the green and the purple and the dark purple are beautiful tones. But the challenge that I find with a lot of my soaps is that I love the natural botanicals and they're a lot of the time much more dull in color compared to the vibrant micas. And uh, so you really almost have to go with an ultra pastel if you want to make them look good, is what I find. So, but yeah, you'll see me do that next. I'm just kind of tweaking this a little bit more. And I actually find with soap, a lot of the time, you can just keep playing with it. And uh, it can just turn out so beautiful and unique. So what I like to do is just put my cold process soaps in the oven for a little bit. It uh, I just keep put them on like 150 on a keep warm setting and it ensures that they fully gel and it creates a bar that's just a bit firmer, lasts a bit longer and I think looks aesthetically more pleasing too. The colors come out a bit more vibrant. So it's the next day and you can see I'm so happy with how these have come out. Got the other loaf here. So I'm just gonna take these guys off and usually I will use a knife if my molds are really full, but they are not too bad with 3,700 grams of oils. Just gonna shake off the botanicals. I'm so excited to cut this. Okay, I'm gonna pop this guy out here. I just put him vertically. Ooh, and this is a little softer, but it's still definitely good for unmolding today. But it is definitely softer. Um, then I sometimes unmold, but not the softest. It's just on the softer side, I should say. Breaking the seal there. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna pop these silicone molds in the sink. And we've got the beautiful obsidian here. I'm just gonna put the botanical side down and to the back, flip this around like so. Make sure the botanicals are kind of off the sides as much as possible. And then I am gonna cut some samples. We've got some beautiful swirls going on here. Let's see if I can show you these. Absolutely love that. I didn't know how these were gonna come out because I had done so many swirls and I thought I kind of over mixed them because of the fact that I was using um, more of colors that don't normally go together as much. Um, but I do not think that these looked over, I don't think they look over mixed. It's beautiful. So this is going to be wild lavender sage and smells absolutely divine. You're getting that ro uh, rosemary as well as the sage and then the lavender with it. Absolutely obsessed. I think the only thing I would probably do differently is just if I was gonna use these brighter colors, I would not put the botanicals on the top just because they look a little bit dull when you're using really vibrant mica pigments. Just going through here with some 99% rubbing alcohol. Wipe off the wires just so the, um, <laughs> the soap on there doesn't smear um, when I run the next part of my loaf through. Okay, and we're gonna Pop this guy on here. Do some more samples. Maybe not quite that many. Let's see, yeah, I think that. We will just be liberal. So these I'm gonna cut into smaller pieces um, for the sample bars. Ooh, we've got some more greens down here. I love how that green turned out, it's kind of, like a foresty, almost like a rosemary type green, but it's kind of more of like a forest tone. I love that. All right, so next loaf going here. Again, botanicals down. I'm just gonna put a little bit of batter on there. Okay, I do see a couple air pockets, um, but that is okay, nothing too crazy. And again, I'm just gonna cut some sample bars here, about like so. Ooh, we've got some beautiful swirls on this one as well. They're all different. I think that's just the beauty when you're making soaps. Oh, they're so chunky too. I love this new cutter. I will um, link the seller in the description box below. This one almost looks like it has a heart at the center. Oh, I'm so excited. And then these have a little more white to them. I think that rosemary sage fragrance really helps because the white sage and lavender fades that rosemary sage. It just really helps kind of bump it up. little loaf here.
absolutely obsessed with these. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy soaping. <laughs> I would like to take the time to thank my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out goes to Wendy, Nicole Rott, Nancy with All About Me Beauty Bar, Merle, Brad with Neon City Scents, Michelle, Paula, Zahara with Crystalline Candle Co., Julie with B-Lux Candle Co., Jennifer with Bea Essentials, Selena with Bambury Street Creations, Andrea, Sue, Nick, Bruce, Emma, Flavia, Jennifer with Bittersweet Candle Co., Danielle, Anitra with Ninth and Maxwell, Matthew, Jindy, Lisa, Elizabeth, Tammy, Carol, Cheryl with Soaps by Cheryl, Maya, Losa, Betty, Luz Dari, Taichi, John with Past Sense Candles, Angela, Amber, Bluegrass Bath and Candle Co., Marquita, Ali, Carla, Todd with Cold Creek Candle Co., Krista, SS, Karen with River Birch Soaps, Kina with Kijoli, Angela, Amanda, Denise with Grumblegeist Candle Co., She's More, Cindy, Kim, Teresa, Frida, Sharomi, J Creative P, Colette, Nicole, Stella, Leanne, Martha, Angela, Jamie, Chadwick, Z, Mabel, Arev, Bobby, Jamie, Brian, Amy, Julia, Stephanie, Honey, Janet, Terry, Maria, Carla, Lo, Genevieve, Gracie, Yolanda, Tonya, Susan, Irene, Rolanda with Mason Marzette, Megan, Melissa, Ursulette with Ursulette's Beauty Secrets, Danny with Halos, Kelly, TCM with Ava Bryceco, Lois, Terry with Maddie Rose Market, Tia, Victoria with The Sacred Prayer, Valerie, Stacy with Firewick with Me, Jenna with Sebastopol Botanicals, Belinda, Rhonda, Smadar, Duchess Luxury Creations, Juliet, Carla, Crystal with Indigo Scents Candle Co., Anika, Kim with Kimberly's Candle Co., Kim, Angelic, Tia, Chris, Jason, Sharon, Miss S, Shakira, Tiffany, Kim, BN, Lizette, Chandra, Pat, Chickadee Company, Tara, Heather, Indigo, Shijana with Forever Mellow Co., Gina, Emily, Sandra with Loft 54, Heidi, Brianna, Sunday, Michelle, Lisa, Angela with Woodland Apothecary, Kelly Vons, Angela, Natalie with Walters Wicks, Anne, Sherry, Cynthia, Denise, Sonia, Natasha, Elisa, Edward, Shambliss Candles and Soaps, Sabina, Raphael with Alondra's Candle Co., Desi, Kim, Abby Lane Candle Co., Christina, Tomi with Rose and Crown Soap, Tara, Joy, Betty, Katie, Diane, Kelly, Judith, Sherry, Diane, Courtney with 17 December's Candle Co., Stacy, Yvette, Teresa with All About Serenity, Janetta, and Monica. Your support is deeply appreciated.